Hello, teacher. Oh, hello, hello. Um, good evening. Good evening and welcome. So, Thank you. here we are once again, ready to start a new lesson. Um, good uh, evening. I was about to tell you good afternoon. Uh, good evening, everyone. This okay. evening, we are going to be um, going on a different route. All right. So, we're going to do a little bit of a, of a reading practice but it's not going to be necessarily um, just reading, okay? So there is something um, important, I would say, um, about English, you know, and it is pragmatics. Pragmatics is what happens when you um, understand the language, okay? So in Spanish, I think that uh, we are very clever we are very good at understanding spanish i consider because of course spanish is our first and mother language and therefore um you know we kind of of course will be very good at understanding spanish but in english it happens sometimes that uh, we do understand english in regular manners, okay? When we're having a regular conversation, but we of course have to remember that languages are not always used for regular situations. There are going to be times when you're going to be needing to use the language with a little bit of a funny way, with a little bit of a um, casual way. Therefore, this evening we have already done reading, we have already done um, what uh, tongue twisters. So tonight we're going to do jokes, okay? So it is something that happens to people. People sometimes get really, really confused with jokes. And uh, I remember it was actually one challenge that I got one time um, when I went to a, um, a stand-up show. And uh, yeah, I remember that the, the, the guy that took me there, um, he was wondering if I was actually, you know, understanding the jokes. And uh, he was like, do you really get them? And I remember that, that I did. Okay, it's not only for show off, but I do remember that I did get the jokes. I, um, I was actually laughing for real, not only because the rest of people were laughing, because sometimes that happens. Sometimes you go to, um, to a comedy show and you don't get all of the jokes or you don't get some of them but you laugh just because the rest of the people are laughing and you're like, okay, so I, I, I suppose that was funny. Therefore, um, yeah, I'll laugh. Uh, but in other times, you just, you know, really get the, the idea. Therefore, of course, you are going to, um, going to laugh. So this evening, what we're going to do is basically that. We are going to be... Um, reading, discussing, learning, call it whatever you want to call it. Um, but the main thing is that we're going to be doing, you know, some uh, some English jokes. Of course, before we get to the jokes, before we get to the to that part, um, I want to ask you something uh, as per usual, you know, and uh, normally we talk about favorites. We talk, we talk about things that uh, um, that we do like. But in other times, we don't really talk or we don't really know things that we don't like. So this time, um, apart from asking you guys about your favorites, I want to know about something that is your least favorite. Okay. So I normally ask you, you know, about good things. So tonight I want to ask you before we get to the funny section, I want to ask you about something that might not be as good. Now, the question is, what is your least favorite food? Okay, so sometimes we don't think about that. But now just think about it. What is the food that you don't like at all? Like if you see a picture of it, you even feel like throwing up. So what is your least favorite food? And uh, I think I would like to start by hearing from Jose Luis. So tell me, Jose Luis, what is your least favorite food? The thing that you despite whenever you, you are... Um, to have it. My, um, I think it's flor de isote. Okay, and why would that be? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I just hate the the 
how, how do you say sabor? The flavor? flavor. Okay, the flavor of the oh. of that food. Okay. Well, um, in my case, I don't know if I like it or not because the times I've had it, I think it's just one of those things, you know, that doesn't really add up a lot of flavor. It does have a flavor to it, but it's more like sour, in my opinion. It's more like a like a sour flavor more, more than than a characteristic flavor. But yeah, I think I think flor de sota is not, you know, the best thing to eat. And have you guys ever heard that that we are basically a weird country because we eat our national flower? You know, no other country necessarily does that, but we do. We eat um, so many things that we did. We even get to eat our national flower. But okay, now, uh, how about the case of uh, Joaquin? How about you, Joaquin? What is your least favorite, um, your least favorite food? <clears throat> okay, teacher. Um, uh, let me see. Wow. <laughs> there, there are many things, uh, many food that I like it, mm -hmm. but I think in my favorite food is uh, <laughs> in chicken soup. Chicken soup? Si, chicken soup. Oh. Yes. But are we talking about chicken soup, like like um you know farm grown chicken soup, or are we talking about uh farm uh sorry about um like the the gallina India like like the 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 the, the, yes. the natural thing <laughs> gallina India oh okay yes. so you're similar to my stepsister in that because she doesn't like it either. You know, yeah, my stepsister is one of those people, the ones who uh, don't like um, chicken soup at all, or um, how can we call it? I'd rather call that hen soup, you know, because that's the actual name for, for like gallinas, it's hen. So yeah, it's just so we don't get confused, because if we talk about um, chicken, in my mind, at least, a chicken mm -hmm. is always going to be um, the farm grown one, you know, the, the, the old thing. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, the, 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 the regular thing. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, uh, once in a while, I, I, I would like to, to buy uh, chickens <laughs> in you. Mm -hmm. uh, because, but you don't like the soup. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, things that happen, you know. Yeah, okay. So, mm -hmm. I mean, some people will kill for it, but you don't like it, and it's, it's you, you know. You just don't like it. So, good. Yes. Very good. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Um, how about the case of um, let's see, Jancy. How about you, Jancy? What is your least favorite food? For me, I don't like pakaya. Pakaya. <laughs> yes. It's, okay. It's very. How do you say amarga? Sour. 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 Uh -huh. It's sour for me. I don't like it. Okay, so pacayas. I don't know what pacayas are. <laughs> I mean, I, I forgot I forgot what it was. Let me look it up. Pacayas. I think I, I have had it before. Ah, yeah. Esta planta, cierto. Okay, yeah, I've had it. Uh, in rellenos, ¿verdad? That's how they prepare it most of the time. So, okay. Yeah, it, it's good with cheese and eggs. Yeah, yeah. I have, like I've had it. In my case, I love pacayas. You love pacayas? Oh, okay. Yeah. So because the a... taste. Uh huh. Just because, because the taste. Because they're sour, right? So with the cheese and the eggs, they, they feel. Yeah. Taste. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember I've had it. I remember I've had it before. So I don't really despite it. So, but okay. So pacayas, because they are sour. It's basically the same as, as flor de sote, as, as far as I remember. They have a very similar flavor there. Yes. Okay, um, how about the case of, uh, let's hear from, Roberto said he was driving. So how about you, Jacqueline? What will happen to be your least favorite food? Well, teacher, maybe the food that uh, I like most 
Maybe it could be eggplants. Eggplants, oh. yes. Okay. And why would that be? Excuse me, teacher. Why would you think uh, that eggplants are, you know, something that you don't like to have? I don't know, teacher. I try to eat, but I don't like it. Okay. Yes, I will yes. not be able to say that I like or I don't like eggplants because I because I only try it. I think I've only tried it once. I'm not sure, but I think I've only tried it once. And I don't even remember the flavor, you know. I think it was something a little bit sour, but mm -hmm. I don't I'm, I don't remember. Yes, yeah, teacher. But, yeah, okay. So eggplants. Actually, just to be honest, um, I remember that one time I said that that was my least favorite food, but it was because I hadn't really tried it. So, yeah, but... I mean, now that I uh, I remember that I have only tried it once, I can say that I cannot judge eggplants because I have never really uh, eat them, you know, for like a, a few times. But okay, so eggplants in your case. Um, how about uh, Helen? How about you, Helen? What is your least favorite food? Well, for me, um, it will be shell cocktail, like shells. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So... Yeah, because in reality, I have never eaten anything like that, but I don't like the idea to put like the lemon um, on them. It's like, it's just cruel. It's just... <laughs> yeah, it is, it is raw. Like yeah. yeah, it is basically raw. Yeah, so I like it. I, I won't say I love it, but I, I like it a lot, you know, mostly when they're fresh. Um, so, you know, things that happen, but yeah. They had to be alive, so. <laughs> I yeah, I understand. I mean, many people are like that, you know, many people just don't like them. The one thing that I remember I was very keen to try was um, Toro X. I know, I know it's bad. I know I have only done it twice. Okay. But I tried Toro X one time and I won't say I love them. But they were not that bad, you know. It was quite an, ex an experience, and it wasn't really that bad. I won't say I'll do it again, but yeah, I mean, I thought it was going to be horrible, but it wasn't. It was just, like, very strange, and the flavor was weird, but, you know, it was, it's something that I can get out of my bucket list. I can say that, yeah, I mean, something that many people do in my country, something that many people have tried before, I did it too. <laughs> so, yeah. Total X, not not like that bad, but yeah. Um, shell cocktail, I eat it almost every time I go to um to the beach, so it's a very common thing for me to have. Um, how about the case of uh, let's see, Julia? What is your least favorite food, Julia? Hello, everyone. Hello. There. Well, in my case, uh, I think it's seafood in general. I don't like nothing about fish because I'm from Chalatan. Well, well, my family is from Chalatenango. And it was a time they prepare everything with fish, uh -huh. like pupusas and, and everything. So it got you bored. Was, yes, and, and I I now I cannot eat <laughs> anything about uh, fish or seafood in general. You know, the fact that you mentioned the region where the family was from, it remind me of something that has happened to me before. Me, honestly, I love seafood. Like, um, I think I have tried many things. One of my favorite things about Buffet in the U.S., I remember it was that they had, um, they had oysters and uh, I would eat oysters all the time. But uh one thing is that my family the family that i have in guatemala they don't live anywhere close to a beach you know so they have never really been to the beach before the only kind of fish that they have eaten is fish from fresh water so they don't know how um seafood seafood or, or sea fish actually tastes like so the idea for them the idea of having seafood it's just mind blowing. And they just straight ahead and, and say, I don't like it. Even though they haven't tried it, they say they don't like it because 
yeah, the idea of having seafood for them is something that is weird because of the region where they live. So, yeah, they say that seafood, shrimps, anything like that, it's not for them. And I'm like, okay, so more for me then. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, seafood then. Um, how about the case of uh, Janeth? What would you say is your least favorite food? Um, to me, uh, I think all 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 the the things prepared with pork. Mm -hmm. Less mm -hmm. the tacos al okay. pastor. Okay. I, I lie to me. I I I I I say to me that it's not pork. <laughs> so you lie to yourself. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm having beef. I'm having, I'm not having the best beef ever. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So only one thing. En este caso, cuando usted dice a uh, menos, o sea, cuando estamos poniendo un ejemplo de decir um, todo menos una cosa, but. es mejor si utilizamos el but, like everything prepared with uh, pork, but tacos al pastor. Sí. Todo menos. So it will be. Todo menos, no, no diríamos less, sino but, en ese caso. But. Uh -huh, but. So everything but, ¿sí? O si, por ejemplo, yo fuese a decir, eh, el 14, si se acuerdan, yo dije, everyone is here but Walter, ¿sí? Mm -hmm. El único que, ajá, que andaba por allá, dicen, en, en, en no sé dónde, <laughs> en charralado, dicen que lo tenía, no sé, yo no sé. I don't know. Ok, uh, now, how about uh, Daniel? How about you, Daniel? What is your least favorite food? <laughs> Daniel is not, but I'm here, teacher. Uh, okay, but he okay he shows in my screen. Oh, okay, so Daniel is not uh, available right now. Let's hear maybe from Catherine. How about you, Catherine? We haven't heard from you in the last couple of classes. What is your least favorite food, Catherine? Hi. Hello there. Um, fish, but just fish. I mean, I love crabs, lobster, shells. Mm -hmm. But fish is, I, I don't like it. I mean, I don't like the terms. And it's like very complicated to eat. Mm -hmm. So if something else on the menu that I can choose, I mean, it will be better for me because I don't like get there in my fingers or something like that with the fish. Mm, okay. So the bones of the fish will be the things. Yeah, mm -hmm, correct. Okay. How about salmon? Um. I like it, but I just eat it prepared, mm. not fresh. Okay, good. Okay, so yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. I remember when my sister was younger, she would say that um, she hated fish because of the same thing, you know, because fish bones are very complicated things to um, to get out of the uh, of the actual meat. Uh, but yeah, and there are some fishes. The other day I tried, I don't remember the name of the fish, but I just, I just remember it was, oh, carpa. I think that's, that's what, how they called it. They called it carpa. It was a big thing. Um, and it, it had uh, bones right in the middle of the, of the meat. Like the, it had bones everywhere, you know, and it's very dangerous. I mean, we had to eat it, but we had to be very cautious with it because yeah, it, it was Something tricky to have because of those bones in the middle of the meat. So yes, and my, my grandma always scared me about getting intoxicated with the thorns, with the bones. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't like it. Yeah, that's another thing, you know. <laughs> uh, personal experiences sometimes uh, create that kind of heritage in, our, in ourselves as well. All right. Yeah. How about uh, Sandra? What would you say, yeah. Sandra, is your least favorite food? Well, my least favorite food is seafood, but fish, the, the, because uh, all of the the others one, the other ones, uh, cause me allergy. Oh. Uh, however, uh, by speaking about pacayas, is that the flower mora, in despite of their bitter flavor, they have great properties for our health, and I love them. That one. Mm. Okay, yeah. cool. So yeah, something important about that is that actually I remember that um, the first time I tried pacaya, 
to be honest, me confundí con lo de la pacaya, se los digo en español porque es más fácil así, me confundí con lo de la pacaya con otra cosa, es una, una planta similar a la mora, pero no me acuerdo cómo se llama, sí me acuerdo que, o sea, tiene como cinco hojas igual a la otra planta que pueda que alguno se imagine, sí, este, pero no me acuerdo cómo se llama, sé que mi ¿Chipilín? tía lo... No, no, el chipilín, súper común, no, no, no. Verdolaga, teacher. Tampoco me suena. O sea, como les digo, piensen en algo que tiene cinco, cinco puntas la, 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 la planta. Y no, no es, no es that thing, ¿ok? No los pone locos. Es simplemente una planta. No, un día, no, no, no. Lo digo. Lero. No, no. Lero. No. Tampoco, es que la verdad se me olvidó. Y dicen que eso es lo que se cre crece bastante en la zona de Zacatecoluca, según. Papelío, San Nicolás. Hola. Papelío o San Nicolás. No, es que honestamente lo que sí me acuerdo es que se parecía el nombre de la pacaya. O sea, es lo que sí me acuerdo yo. Y que mi tía lo preparó bien picadita esa cosa con, um, con huevo. O sea, fue como que, ajá, ¿verdad? Ella dijo que era muy bueno para, um, por los antioxidantes que tenía, más que todo. Mm. Ajá. Entonces, pero le voy a preguntar Acela. al rato. Le voy a preguntar y le, le, voy, a, le voy a pasar. Tal vez la las po la pollas de isote. No. no. No, es que, que si hubiera mencionado isote, no, y eso de hecho lo he comido, eso aquí en la casa la sacamos a veces. ¿Do you know cuchamper? ¿Hola? ¿Do you know cuchamper? Cuchamper. No, doesn't ring a bell. Like a whisky, like a whisky, it's uh -oh. delicious. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Hey there, Daniel. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I have a problem with my cognition. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, in my case, mm -hmm. um, I love the meat, but I hate, I don't know, what do you say, la carne oreada? Oh, that would be dry meat. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny, but um, my mother loves. Delicious. Same as me. I mean, I will have <laughs> no. it any day. Yeah. If there is I dry hate. meat, count me in. <laughs> <laughs> so... Okay, so carne orada is the thing that does it for you then. Yeah. What do you say carne orada? Oh, it would be dry, meat? dry meat. Mm -hmm. no. Dry meat. Okay. O sea, básicamente como decir carne seca, dry meat. Okay, so dry meat. Um, you know, a funny fact is that in the U.S., they have made that a snack. Sí, hoy en día, o sea, venden carne, carne seca como... Como una chuchería, like in, in bags, they have a sticks of oh, a dry yeah, or yeah. smoked. Yeah, yeah. It, it can be dry or I smoked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was kind of weird. Como tiras de carne, ¿no? sí, I don't know if you guys have ever seen in, in movies that people have those, son así como rojas, unas tiras largas rojas. Hay unas que yeah. son dulce, sí, algunas son dulce, pero otras son carne. Entonces, um, they do that in the US, they have it. And Ahora que me acuerdo de eso, voy a pedir de eso al rato. Fíjense que viene un primo mío para acá. Le voy a decir que me traiga. <laughs> But okay. Um, so, how about you, Walter? What will be the thing that does it for you? What will be your least favorite food? Uh, in my case, well, um, first is called cuyuyas. It's the base of the national flowers. Oh, lo que dijo Asdru, yeah. las pollas. Aquí, yeah. O sea, por aquí se le llama más. Santa Ana es cuyuyas. Mm, okay. I don't know. In my family, I like to cook that. I don't know. <laughs> it's same to same to pacayas. I don't like it. The sour is. I don't like it. Um, another food is the the fish. I don't like it. So difficult to me to eat because I spend a lot of time to eat. Uh, uh, when I eat fish, mm -hmm. uh, I eat. I don't know how to say, como menos. I eat less? Yeah, I eat less because I spend a lot of time with the, uh, find the, the, the right. bones of the fish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, another thing I don't like is the shrimps. Shrimps? Oh. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't know. When I eat shrimps, I produce so problem in my stomach. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Weird. Okay. So you don't have you have many you are a cook, but you have many things that you don't like. Hmm? Yeah. 
Okay, understandable. You know, my family, they are always um, kind of like joking about me because I never have anything that I say I don't like. But there is one thing. Oh. Actually, a few months ago, I discovered one thing that I hate. And it's not just that I don't like it. It's like hate it. And when I see them, it's that like it gets me mad. And I know many people <laughs> love them, but it really gets to my bones when I hear about them. And it's pupusas of uh, ayote. Oh, I really? hate the fact that people <laughs> make them. I love you know, it. are so delicious. I'm like, I, yeah. I love it. Yeah, I'm like, why? Why? Which is? Or also <laughs> yeah. pupusas with mora or with chipilin. I'm like, yeah. you are not Salvadorian. No, I mean, my pupusas are revueltas. Like, that's pupusas, you know, beans pupusas, but no, I don't know. It's like, People try to be healthy and they decided to put all that in, in pupusas and I don't know. I don't know, yeah. honestly. Also, pupusas with camarón are like, who, who came up with that idea? <laughs> ahora venden pupusas hawaianas también. Yo, o sea, suficiente con la pizza, era rica. Sí, pero de ahora jocote, pupusas hawaianas. De jocote, no, ya pupusas de jocote. Llámenme clásico, pero de verdad, a mí solo me gustan las pupusas de, 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 de ayote. De, um, also with color. Loroco, sí, uh -huh. Loroco, revueltas eh, de frijol y locas y así, pero de verdad que yo cuando escucho eso, es como que no, nah, no, nah. mi hermana siempre me molesta porque cuando salimos, verdad, bueno, una vez estábamos de hecho en Santa Ana, en una pupusería cerca de la catedral, entonces uh -huh. y cuando llegaron a pedir la orden, vieron ellas, ella y mi novia vieron que tenían pupusas de, que de jamón y no sé qué otras cosas así creativas, entonces yo, le, yo tipo, no, yo quiero dos de frijol y dos revueltas. O sea, that's me. Y yo siempre le digo, yo hago una pupusa por el sabor de la pupusa revuelta. Si, si la revuelta está buena, entonces las pupusas están buenas. De ahí para allá, o sea, yo les creo que me digan que las de ayote, la que sea, está buena. You are right. Yeah, I am not right, probably. But I just, you know, I just don't, I don't know. I'm a classic one on that. You know, I don't like to try things like those. You know, that's good about pupusas. You can put anything inside them and they're going to be for someone. You know, someone's going to like them at least. But I don't know if you guys saw that. There is one place in, 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 in Oloquilta. I don't know if it's true either. Uh, but they claim to make pupusas with M&Ms. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they claim to make pupusas with M&Ms. Also with marshmallows. Oh my god! Did you imagine that? Okay. See, see, that's what I that's what I mean. So for me, it's the same. Así como usted dijo ahorita que es una pupusa para mí, la que le ponen ayote ya no es pupusa. Eso ya es que se llama una ensalada. So, so yeah. But, Teacher, oh, do you like? I'm sorry. Do you like baby corn tamales from Yuzulutan? Baby corn. Yes, baby corn tamales. Tamales de lote, pues. Ah, sí. <laughs> sí. Oh my God, from you, you tank. Oh my God. Where did what? you get them? Was it close to uh, Tropigas? No, no, no. We went with my husband last last week, mm -hmm. and and we got some tamales from them. Oh my God! But, but was it in downtown Usulutan? Yes, yes. They 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 sell them whatever in Usulutan. But I mean, the thing is that there there are. There is one vendor, okay? He yeah. is across from Tropigas, Usulutan, very close to Dollar City and all that. I don't know really. But... Those, those tamales, those tamales are <laughs> the best thing ever. Okay? Yes, of course. Are salty or sweetie or sweet? They are, they are just balanced. Okay. Let's just say that they are just balanced. They are salty. They are salty, okay? Yes, but you don't feel like ah, they're always soft and that's one of the, the things that does it for me with when it yeah. comes to to tamales they're always soft and uh i don't know if you ever if you ever come to sulutan and you have the chance to go by downtown and um you're you see a tropigas okay stop the car right there and then stop the car and start looking for that vendor because he's just right in front of it, right across from it. So it's right across from, um, from Tropigas. And oh. I mean, he's there from eight, I think eight till 5 PM. I don't know where he gets so many tamales from, 
but he always has tamales. The other day, my family and I went and got um six dozens. So huh? yeah, six yeah. dozens. Six dozens. Oh my six god, dozens. <laughs> it's mad. That's how good they are. So yes, yeah, they, they are. are very very good. Six dozens of of uh, um baby corn tamales. So, yes. Yeah. So my mom is mm -hmm. from is from Sudan, and she makes tamales baby corn tamales with chili mm. oh that's also a gem mm -hmm. that's Thanks. also a gem yep in my case honestamente eso es muy muy así personal y ajá a mí no me gusta comer tamales en otro lado a mí no o sea si voy a, a, a es que no sé miren tamales y tortillas a mí no me gusta comer to tortillas en general tortillas yo me como una tal vez si es sopa dos o tres sí hay gente que me dice cómo puedes y yo tipo no sé pero en San Salvador, pasando el empa, va, del empa para allá, a mí no me gustan las tortillas. Es que yo no sé quién les enseñó también a hacerlas así chiquitas y gorditas. O sea, es como que yo les juro que a mí no me gustan así. A mí las tortillas, mientras más delgadas, mejor. A veces yo a la señora que a quien se las compro hasta le pido que me las haga delgaditas como si fueran para tacos. Y como la señora pues, ya me conoce y todo desde chiquito, ella las hace así. Entonces... No sé, a mí no me gustan las tortillas eh, porque siento que se quiebran cuando uno las quiere, o sea, cuando, o sea, sí se supone que se quiebren, va, pero como que, no sé, como que la masa se endura como si estuviese partiendo una margarita, algo así, o sea, yo así lo siento, entonces, ajá, aquí criticando, ¿verdad?, la comida allá del centro, este, y la otra cosa son los tamales, yo los siento duros siempre, o sea, los tamales, no sé por qué, siempre que, como que, el par de veces que he tenido la oportunidad de probarlos, los he sentido duros. Entonces... And with eh, sugar, too. Uh -huh. yeah, Eso like me it. pasó hey. una vez en Mr. Donut. Eran dulces y yo como... Oh, oh, oh. Delicious. ¿Quién les enseñó I like delicious. Sí. Um, that's why, because I think um, mix tamales with uh, no um, enough... Uh, oil? Or... Oil, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or my mom uh, in in their in their young young younger time mm -hmm. they make uh, with my with my mother-in-law uh, sorry with my uh, grandma mm -hmm. they makes with um, manteca de cuche. Mm -hmm. That's me. That's me. So yeah, <laughs> we make tamales sometimes here at home, and whenever we're gonna do that. I make sure that I know beforehand so I can go to the market and ask my uh, butcher for some manteca for the next day. So I do that, you know. Yo siempre les digo, si ustedes no quieren, yo la pago, no hay problema. Don't worry, guys. Delicious. So yeah, with manteca and chicharrones. If you do Delicious. that, it's heaven on earth. So yeah. But I don't know. I, it's just, you know, the, you... The, thing, the thing of tortillas, eso es algo que sí tenía que sacar, que no me gustan las tortillas del centro. Así que, ajá, según día nos vemos, no me ofrezcan dos días. Teacher, you heard about chanfaina? Yes. Delicious. Baby, baby pork. Blended. Yeah. Delicious. Yeah. I remember I was working. Más con, um, más con tortillas delgaditas. Uh -huh. Yeah, in the park, in the park, I sit on the bench and suddenly a uh, one dollar of chanfaina, mm, one dollar mm. of tortillas and una horchata. And, and a piece of cheese, you know, yeah, a, a little delicious. bit of cheese will be just, yeah, yeah or cuajada. But yeah. chanfaina is great. Aquellos que no la conozcan, ni pregunten qué es, porque <laughs> ajá, se pueden, pueden caer. Ew. <laughs> but okay, so people, uh, we have been speaking, that's great, but we have to get to the jokes part. So <laughs> um, sorry for the ones that I didn't get the chance to, um, to ask about it. And the thing is, I think I told you this before. Um, this module is relatively short. You know, we don't really have a ton of information to cover. So tonight I want to put you to test. I want to see how well you are going to be able to understand some English jokes. Some people are just not good for jokes, okay? And tell me about it because my, how can I refer to her? It will be my old best friend because we don't really talk anymore. Um, but my old best friend, my old, pal from the university um we were classmates for almost 10 years we were classmates from the from fifth grade all the way to the end of the university even when i when i went to the u.s when i had that opportunity of going to the u.s she came with you know she also got the chance to go 
Um, we got separated though because she was living in Seattle while I was living in um, in in Minnesota. But still, we even got to meet in the U.S. one time. And uh, one thing about her, uh, also, we even got a job at the same time. We worked at the at the university together for almost two years, I think. Then she decided to quit, and that's when we kind of like broke apart. Um, but the thing is that. I am a guy, a guy for jokes, okay? I love jokes. I'm joking all the time, and probably you can tell. Um, but she used to be my best friend and never was able to understand a joke. Así que eso es algo que a veces creo que toma un poco, ¿verdad? De, qué sé yo, de, de dedicación, el poder entender bromas. Sí, en mi caso, o sea, con lo que le estoy diciendo, ella, o sea, Pasamos juntos 10 años, ¿sí? Hubo una profe incluso que hasta nos dijo que nos íbamos a casar y yo tipo, no, es mi mejor amiga, o sea, la detesto pensando en esa idea. No, no me quiero casar con ella. Entonces, pero la profe decía, sí, no, es que ustedes se llevan tan bien, que no sé qué, no sé cuánto. Pero el punto es que pasábamos tanto tiempo juntos y yo haciendo bromas todo el tiempo y ella nunca entendía las bromas, ¿sí? En la universidad se reían todos en la oficina de las bromas que yo hacía, menos ella. A los dos días venía a entender y yo como, dude, ¿sí? O sea, ya no, porque ya eran bromas en inglés, ¿verdad? En español, alguna que otra cosa entendía. Pero luego siempre me decía, qué voz, Segovia, yo nunca te entiendo. Y yo como, sí, sí. Así que, o sea, les digo porque a veces es algo que a muchos les pasa que tienen dificultad para entender ese tipo de cosas. Y... También, o sea, esto ya va a ser una preparación para una conversación que puedan tener ustedes, ¿verdad? Con una persona en inglés que quiera hacerles una broma. Así que, bueno, vamos a tener algunas que son un poco largas y otras que son un tanto cortas, ¿sí? Um, como va a funcionar, ustedes las van a leer, ¿sí? Y, pues, aquí vamos a ver. El que no la entienda, les pido que sean honestos, ¿sí? Y aquellos que no, no entiendan la broma, que lo digan, ¿verdad? Tipo, hey, I didn't get it. Y en ese caso, entonces... Habrá que explicar, ¿verdad? ¿De qué va la broma? Ok, entonces, vamos a ver. Um, ¿Quién? Who would like to read this one? Who would like to be the one to read the first joke? Me, teacher. Ok, go ahead then. Ok, did you get it? To, to my one and only love, Roger, who was 19 years old, was buying an expensive bracelet to surprise his girlfriend on Valentine's Day at a very smart jewelry shop in Hampton Garden, London. The, the jeweler, jeweler inquired, would you like your girlfriend's name engraved and uh, and it, sorry. Mm -hmm. Roger thought for a moment, grinned, grinned, Then answer no instead of engrave to my two one and only love. The juror smiled and said, Yes, sir, how very romantic of you. Roger returned retorted with a glint in his eye. Not exactly romantic, but very practical. This way, if we break up, I can use it again. Okay. So, did you get it, Walt? I'm try. I'm try to. Okay. Let me read it then. Let me read it. So we have uh, to my one and only love. That's the title of it. Roger, who was a 19-year-old, was buying a spec an expensive bracelet to surprise his girlfriend on Valentine's Day at a very uh, at a very smart jewelry shop. Uh, in Hatton Garden, London. The jeweler, the jeweler inquired, would you like your girlfriend's name engraved on it? Roger thought for a moment, grind, then answered, no, instead engrave to my one and only love. The jeweler smiled and said, yes, sir, how very romantic of you. Roger re retorted with a glint in his eye, not exactly romantic. But a practical, but very practical. This way, if we break up, I can use it again. <coughs> See? So, do you guys get it? Creo que Janet sí lo entendió. Los demás? He's really smart. 
Yes, yeah, okay. yes, it's, yes. it's very yeah. smart. I yeah. mean, it's very unromantic, of course, it's very mm. unromantic, but it is smart. Sí. Porque es casi como, no sé si alguna vez ustedes han visto ese meme, el de un tipo que se tatuó el nombre de la novia y después mm. terminaron, se lo, se lo tapó, se lo volvió a tatuar, terminaron, se lo tapó, se lo volvió a tatuar, oh. terminaron, se lo tapó. Entonces, en este anillo le pregunta el, el, el joyero, ¿verdad? Si quiere que le ponga el nombre de la novia. Entonces, si él le dijo, no, mejor póngale, ¿sí? Uh, para mi único amor, ¿sí? Y le dice entonces el joyero, qué romántico de usted. Y él le contesta, no exactamente romántico, sino muy práctico. Si terminamos, lo puedo volver a usar. Exacto. ¿Sí? O sea, si le pone el nombre, ya no lo va a volver a usar. No puede dar, a menos que se consiga una novia que se llame igual. Pero, ajá, entonces, yeah. With so, a nickname. Very smart, very smart. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, you see, it's not romantic. It's practical. It's very smart. So, yeah. Very Vivian. Entonces, esa es la primera. Ahora, vamos con estas. Esas son más cortas, ¿sí? A ver, so. Um, um, how about Joaquín? Can you please read this one? Okay. What's the best thing about Switzerland? I don't know, but the flower is a big plus. Mm -hmm. Ah, verdad, las más cortas son las que más les van a costar. <laughs> I get it. You got it? Okay, yes. cool. Yeah. Jacqueline, did you get it? Yes, teacher. Yes, you did? Okay. Anyone else? Es que como lo que les pregunto yo cada rato, ¿qué les gusta de esto? ¿Qué les gusta de lo otro? Sí, o sea, sí, habla de la bandera, entonces, uh -huh. pero el doble sentido de la frase. What is the best thing about Switzerland? I don't know, but the flag is a big plus. Sí, ayer estábamos hablando acerca de eso también. Cuando alguien está refiriéndose a un tema y la otra persona mete algo completamente diferente. Es básicamente eso, ¿verdad? Jalar de un lado y del otro. Sí, o sea, ¿qué es lo que más te gusta acerca de... Um, de Suiza. Entonces, si le dice el otro, no sé, pero la bandera es, es un gran más, ¿sí? Es un gran signo de más. Ahora, en español eso no tiene ningún sentido, pero en inglés, if you think about it, remember, how does the Switzerland flag look? ¿Sí? ¿Cómo se ve la bandera de Suiza? Es un fondo rojo con un más grandote, ¿sí? Ahora, cuando hablan ustedes acerca de cosas, personas, lugares, que pueden ser buenas o tienen características buenas, a eso uno se refiere como un plus. Entonces, aquí es el doble sentido. Si ¿sí? if you say, but the flag is a big plus, entonces se va a entender, ¿verdad? O sea, como si están hablando acerca de qué sabe o es sea, algo bueno acerca de, acerca de Suiza. Entonces, pero la persona se desvía de la, de la idea de algo bueno entonces, y viene ahora y nos habla acerca de la bandera, y que la bandera literalmente tiene eso. Entonces, difícil explicarla en español, porque no tiene, la verdad, tanto contexto, porque pues, ajá, ¿verdad? El plus no funciona necesariamente en español, pero lo importante a entender es el hecho de que estábamos hablando acerca de cosas buenas, uh -huh. y normalmente algo que es positivo, o sea, con un signo de más, se entiende como algo bueno. Entonces, si él dijo, ah... Pues la bandera es un más, así que supongo que, ajá, ¿verdad? Es algo positivo. Pero si nos vamos al lado, ah, ya le cachó Joaquín. Sí, si nos vamos al lado literal, pues también la bandera es un más. Así que, ajá. Entonces lo único bueno es la bandera. Ya, yeah. por <risa> him, you know, you can kind of understand that. Ok, vamos ahora con una de las larguitas otra vez. A ver, esta... Jacqueline, can you please read it? Yes, teacher. Eh, did you get it? Guess who? A guy, a guy walks into a post office one day to see a middle, a middle aged balding man. Is correct, Yeah, yes. balding man. Yes. Balding man standing at the counter systematically pasting love stamps on bridge pinks and bulbs with hairs all over them. He he then take take up the perfume bottles mm -hmm. and start spraying a scent all over them. The guys curiously, curiously gets the better of him and he walks walk up to the wedding man and asks him what he is doing. The man says, I'm sending 
I'm sending out 1,000 Valentine's cards sink. Guess who, but why? Ask the guy. The man replies, I'm the worst liar. Mm -hmm. Did you get it, Jacqueline? <laughs> Más o menos. Estas son un poco complicadas por la historia que traen detrás, pero la historia es lo que hace que las, las bromas se entiendan mejor. Sí, vamos a verlo, voy a leer yo. A guy walks into a post office one day to see a middle-aged balding man standing in a, at the counter systematically pasting love stamps on bright pink envelopes with hearts all over them. He then takes out a perfume bottle and start spraying scent all over them. The guy's curiosity gets the best, the better of him, and he walks up to the Pauline man and asks him what he's doing. The guy says, I'm sending out 1,000 Valentine cards signed, guess who? But why, asks the guy. The man replies, I'm a divorce lawyer. See? No, no lo entienden. <risa> o sea que todos los sobres son para, para personas que se quieran divorciar mm -mm. y él le está poniendo como no, no. no los va a mandar así aleatorio a quien caiga Ajá. ¿sí? para a que quien... después se quieran divorciar exacto o sea lo que está mandando es o sea está generando trabajo para el mismo pues o sea, él está mandando las cartas y a veces hay una, hay una broma de esta que es más completa, o sea, que dice que también en el mismo correo, o sea, el mismo día manda a las mismas mil personas les manda una un sobre, ¿sí? con su tarjeta, entonces de esos mil, más de uno va a recibir la tarjeta y va a pensar, ah, me estás engañando, entonces, y se va a querer divorciar, y ahí va a tener la tarjeta del abogado de divorcios entonces, ajá, I'm a divorce lawyer Strategy. It's strategic. Yes, it's very <laughs> smart. You see, most jokes mm -hmm. are just that, kind of smart. Now, yeah. one kind of uh, marketing. Exacto, es el marketing, creando, I mean, he is an entrepreneur, you know, he's creating his own job. Now, one thing is that, uh, para nosotros eso suena raro, sí, o sea, decir, verdad, a divorce lawyer, pero el detalle es que en otras culturas nace eso, de que incluso en Guatemala, según tengo entendido, es así. O sea, la carrera de, de pues, las personas que estudian Derecho se especifican, se especializan directamente en algo. O sea, y eligen ellos, ¿verdad?, en qué área se van a especializar. En cambio, acá es un poco abierto. O sea, acá alguien es abogado y puede hacer un montón de cosas. Sí, puede trabajar en el área penal, mercantil, civil, o sea, familia, todo, ¿verdad? Relacionado a civil, pero, ajá, mi hermana y mi novia son abogadas, así que sé que uh, se relacionan, pero no son lo mismo. Entonces, pero... Sí, um, en este país tienen esa facilidad, en otros lados no necesariamente, porque pues la gente, um, la gente de verdad eh, directamente va a tener que contactarse con él, si ¿sí? no van a ir con cualquier abogado, sino que tiene que ser con él o va a ser con él porque pues él es el abogado um, de divorcios. Ok, vamos a la siguiente, esa es otra de las cortitas. So, uh, let's see if uh, we can get... Uh... Lourdes, can you please read it, Lourdes? Yes. yes. Um, it says, no. did you hear about the mathematician who suffered negative numbers? He'll stop at nothing to avoid them. I can't. I guess. You get it? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. So, did you hear about the mathematician who, who's afraid of negative numbers? He'll stop at nothing to avoid them. Yeah. So, nothing is zero. Yeah. Yeah, is. In this case, we will understand that nothing is zero. Now, also, a stop at, yeah, a stop at is a phrase or verb que se puede utilizar, or la frase completa, stop at nothing, is una frase que se puede utilizar para referirse a que nada lo va a detener. Sí. Entonces, stop at nothing se puede, puede tener eso, esos dos significados. Se va a detener, sí, en cero, porque pues cero es igual que nada. Entonces, y de esa forma va a evitar los números negativos. O la otra forma en la que se puede entender es que nada lo va a detener para evitar los números negativos. So, yeah. So, he'll stop at nothing to avoid him. Esas son los males matemáticos. Matemática. Matemática. 
mathematician. Aquí hay que ubicarse en una línea donde el cero a la izquierda son negativos y luego a la derecha, ¿no? Para poder entenderlo también, ¿no? Ajá, yeah, you can also say it like that. Ajá. You can also say it like that. Yeah, he, can, he will stop at nothing, you know. Se va a quedar ahí y no va a pasar de ahí para evitar, ¿verdad? Llegar a los a los negativos. So, yeah, so that's that's another joke. That's another one related to that. Now, we have this one. Um, I will read this one myself. Sí, voy a leer esta yo. Ya vamos a ver. So, Valentine's Day gift. Johnny asked his friend, Tony, whether he had bought his wife anything for Valentine's Day. Yes, came the answer from Tony, who was a bit of um, chauvinist, a bit of a chauvinist. I've bought her a belt and a bag. That was very kind of you, Johnny added. I hope she appreciates the thought. Tony smiled as, as he replied, so do I. And hopefully, the vacuum cleaner will work better now. <laughs> I understood. <laughs> okay. So tell us, Sandra, what did you get from the joke? ¿Cómo la entendemos? That, uh, that, the, that the girl is a little lazy. And maybe she feel, uh, maybe she will be feel uh, motivated with the, with the gift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one way of looking at it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So very good. Sí. O sea, el detalle es que Tony, o Johnny más bien le preguntó a Tony si había comprado algo para su esposa para el día de San Valentín. Entonces dijo eh, Tony que sí. Eh, y con esto de Tony, o sea, eso del chupenis es básicamente cuando vamos acerca de alguien que es un poquito... Um, how can we say it? Alguien como una persona curiosa, kinda, kinda. Bueno, no vamos a parar a eso. Dice, sí, I bought her a belt in a bag. Sí, le compré un... Um, ¿Se llama? Un, no, sería un, un, un sí. cinturón. Cincho. Sí. Ajá, cincho. un cincho. A belt in a bag. And sí, then he says, that was very kind of you. Sí, eso es muy amable de tu parte. O, bueno, en este caso se podría decir lindo también. Johnny added, I hope she appreciated the thought. Sí, espero que ella aprecie verdad el, 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 la idea o el hecho de que se le, se le dio algo. Y luego Tony sonríe y dice, también yo. Ahora espero que la... ¿Cómo se llama? La... La, 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 la lavadora. No, la... No, la, la aspiradora. La aspiradora la funciona aspiradora. mejor. Sí, que la aspiradora funcione mejor. Lo que Sandra entendió tiene sentido. O sea, que ella pues ahora pues trabaje más eh, con, 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 lo que le, con lo que le compró. Pero no, no es eso. Teacher, es a punish. He punish her. Her wife. No, tampoco. No. Yo sabía que alguno se iba a seguir por ese lado, de que con el, con el censo <risa> le iba a pegar. No. Es porque no, no, también porque no conocemos del todo el sentido de la palabra belt. Sí. Los carros normalmente tienen, eh, ¿verdad? Unas, ¿cómo se llaman? Las, ah, santo. Bandas. Ajá, las bandas, ¿sí? Eso es para que el motor funcione, ¿verdad? O sea, esa banda hace que el motor funcione. Sí. Entonces, lo que él compró fue un cinturón, o sea, una banda para mm. el motor de la aspiradora. Y la bolsa es una bolsa para la aspiradora. O sea, que no le compró algo a ella, sino que compró repuestos para la aspiradora. ¡Oh, no! Es que le... <risa> o sea, no le compró algo a ella, no es una... O sea, Se entiende, si a la hora que ustedes lo leen... A ustedes... double sense. Ajá, ustedes entienden. Ah, le compró un cinturón, le compró un cincho y una cartera, ¿va? Sí, eso es lo que En el mismo color, too much. Ajá, él literalmente compró una, una cinta, sí, un cinto para la, la aspiradora, wow. para el motor... Y una bolsa para la aspiradora. Por eso es que dice, no, so do I. And hopefully the vacuum cleaner will work better now. Sí. Okay. Sí. Esta es una de esas. So he que... tried to fix the, the, the vacuum. Exacto. Sure. El regalo no uh -huh. es para ella. El regalo es para arreglarle la aspiradora a ella. Teacher. Sí. Uh -huh. And I remember another one. Uh -huh. Would you like to tell you? Oh, yeah. Would you like to help you? Uh -huh. Would you like to help you? Te gustaría ayudarte. No. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Um, I would like to 
to set another one. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to, it's, it's a question. If you want to know something, you, are, you have to ask the number one, three, four, etc. Oh, so if you want to know something, you have, you have to ask number uh, one, two, three, four, etc. Number two, three, four, etc. I don't number get that one. Two, three, four, etc. Two, three, four. La pregunta es why. <laughs> ah, okay. Why? Because the number one never knows. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. So if you want to know something, you have to go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I sort of get it, I think. Yeah, you get All right. it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Ahora sí, vamos con esta otra. Esta de hecho se relaciona con uno de los temas que elegimos la vez pasada, ¿verdad? Que hablamos acerca de los, um, ¿cómo se llaman? Los, los, los idioms en inglés. Sí. Yeah. So, uh, let's have... Uh, Jenny, oh no, Jancy, can you please help us reading this joke, Jancy? The joke, okay. Why do we tell actors to break a leg? Because every play has a cast. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a suerte, how do you say suerte? Mm -hmm. Break a leg. Mm -hmm. ¿Alguna forma algo que le entendamos a esto? Why do we tell actors break a leg? To break a leg, sorry. Because, because every play has a cast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Perdón. Es que esto sí, esto sí me gusta. Este, siempre cuando les dije la vez pasada, y me acuerdo que hubo una clase incluso donde había un, un participante que él trabajaba supuestamente en el, en el Teatro Nacional, entonces, si él dijo que también en español se dice, ¿verdad? A los, a los actores siempre, quiebrate una pierna. Entonces, pero ahora, ¿por qué siempre les decimos quiebrate una pierna? Se dice, o se hace, porque todas las obras, ¿sí? Tienen siempre un casting o tienen siempre un reparto. Pero que, o sea, todavía sí, ¿verdad? No se entiende. Entonces se les dice, quiebrate una pierna, o sea, y quienes le dicen eso casi siempre son las personas que están detrás del escenario, quiebrate una uh -huh. pierna, ¿por qué? Porque quieren entonces que sea literal, o sea, que de verdad se quiebre una pierna y así darle trabajo <risa> yeah, a, a sustituir, Ajá, básicamente a eso se refiere, o sea, tipo, <risa> veo yo que va saliendo un actor, yo también soy actor, y le digo, quiebrate una pierna, o sea, pero tipo, de verdad, o sea, que se quiebre la pierna para que después me den trabajo a mí. Exacto. A eso se refiere, ¿verdad? So, because uh -huh. every play has a cast. It's true, so. Yeah, I mean, it's what some people say, you know, this is more like a phrase, more than, it's more a phrase than a joke. But some people say that the ones who wish you the best are robbers. ¿Sí? O sea, dicen en el bus, ¿verdad? Los chistes del bus dicen eso, o sea, que quienes te desean lo mejor son los ladrones. ¿Sí? Porque, por ejemplo, un abogado quiere que perdas todo, quiere que te divorcies, quiere que, o sea, quiere siempre que, que estés mal. Un doctor quiere que te enfermes y no sé qué. Un profesor quiere que no sepas las cosas porque si no, no le van a dar trabajo a él. En cambio, un ladrón te desea lo mejor porque de esa forma te va a poder robar algo mejor también. Entonces, o sea, básicamente ahí va, ¿verdad? O sea, los que siempre nos van a desear lo mejor van a ser los ladrones. Entonces aquí, o sea, el compañero le dice, quiebrate una pierna porque, pues sí, quiero que después me den trabajo a mí. So yeah, basically that's, oh that's the meaning. God. Son algo negras, algunas de esas bromas, eso sí. Bien grosero. Sí, okay. Now we have candy. I'm going to read this one as well because this is a very long one. So, four-year-old Sam loved candy almost as much as his mom Sally did. He and daddy had given her a beautiful heart-shaped box of chocolates for Valentine's Day. A few days later, Sam was eyeing it wishing to have a piece of it. As he reached out to touch one of the big pieces, Sally said to him, if you touch it, then you have to eat it. Do you understand? Oh, yes, he said, nodding his head. Suddenly, his little hand patted the tops of all the pieces of candy. Now I can eat them all, he said. See? 
Esa es más sencilla, no me digan que no la van a entender. Lean la su velocidad, a ver qué tal, a ver si le entendemos algo. Esta es literal. Esta es literal. Esta es la más fácil de todas. O sea, direct, sí, directamente. O sea, eso es como aquellos que tienen hijos deben saber esto. Sí, o sea, ustedes le dicen al niño. Ah, si encendes esa tele, vas a pasar viendo tele toda la tarde. ¿Y qué hace el niño? Ah, enciende la tele. O sea, en este caso son chocolates, ¿verdad? Si le dices, si lo tocaste, lo comes. Ajá. Entonces el niño tocó todas las piezas del chocolate porque se lo quería comer todo. Entonces, si if you touch it, you eat it. Y por eso fue que a tocarlos todos. O sea, esta, esta como les digo, esta era la más literal de todas. Si de toditas, toditas, esta era como la más literal. Solamente había fal hacía falta que leerla para entender. Yes, Oh, it's uh, nine o'clock, teacher. See? Si? Yeah. Huh? It's nine o'clock. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, so uh, I think we should stop here, right? Bueno, eh, mañana recuerden, tenemos clase. Sí, mañana yes. bien vamos a, a practicar un poquito esto y creo que también vamos a hacer algo diferente, algo más eh, orientado a otro tema tema, pero mejor no se los digo porque sería spoiler. Um, pero bueno. En la camisa no. So, um, for now, basically that's it. Thank you guys very much. El reto, sí, el reto. Ah, la tarea no se las pedí. Tomorrow. Mañana les toca. <risa> mañana les toca. Mañana les toca la tarea. Yeah, of course. Sí. Bueno, entonces, eh, pero bueno, so tomorrow we're going to continue uh, practicing, working, discussing. Uh, for now, yes. I write in the chat el uh, the oh, yeah. Yeah. Ahí lo vi, sí, ahí lo vi, ahí lo vi. Lo bueno es que me queda guardado aquí de una vez. Okay, so uh, thank you guys very much for your attention and participation on this evening's class. See you tomorrow. Have a See really good tomorrow. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone.